Hello YouTube and welcome. Uh, my name is Leander Hutton. I am a photographer among other things and I'm going to talk about a piece of software I use to edit my photos and organize my photos called Darktable. Um, it is free, open source, available for um, Linux and Mac and I think there's a Windows build of it now. I'm going to talk about it on a Mac because um, there's kind of a not a lot of information out there about some of the about using it on a Mac and some of the peculiarities particular to the platform. Um, this is the main screen, but uh, I'm going to go over a few kind of cursory information first before we get into this. So first things first, uh, I'll show you where to get it from. If you go to darktable.org, um, you'll see this page here. And if you click on the install tab up here in the top, you'll get um, this page of options here. Um, you click on the OS 10 logo, you uh, download the DMG image and drag it to your applications folder like you would any other um, application. It requires 10.6. I'm running uh, El Capitan here, um, but 10.6 or newer, 64-bit. Doesn't work on old 32-bit processors, so if you got like an Intel Core 2 or Intel Core Duo, yeah, it was a 32-bit ones. You know, that's a 10-year-old computer now, get a new machine. Uh, anyway, so uh, a few things, if you're using Gatekeeper, you might need to mess with it to uh, allow it to run because this is not like a signed application, um, like from the App Store. Um, so a few things, uh, I'm doing this on Mac. Most people think of me as a Linux person probably first and foremost. I've actually been using Macs longer. I'm probably, I'm just as familiar with OS X. Um, you know, I used Mac back in like OS 7 days, so System 7. Uh, so I'm pretty familiar with the platform. A lot of photographers use Macs, so I wanted to kind of hit on this software for them. Um, if you're looking for other good tutorials, I can recommend a couple of people. Um, they mostly focus on Linux, though. Uh, Robert Hutton's YouTube channel, he has a ton of videos going back to, uh, you know, like the earlier versions of Darktail and how to use it. It is Linux-centric, um, but a lot of the stuff translates pretty well. I'm not related to him. Someone asked me that the other day on Reddit. Uh, no relation. A lot of Huttons out there. Eh. Uh, another guy, Riley Brandt. He is a university photographer at, I forget the name of the university, but a university in Canada, uh, which is America's hat, um, if you're bad at geography. Uh, he has a bunch of stuff, not just on Darktable, but on other open source applications. Um, and again, Linux centric, but some of the stuff will probably focus, uh, will probably translate pretty well. So, uh, check out their YouTube channels, um, and see what they have for you. Um, but, uh, before we uh, get going with Darktable, I'm going to talk about organizing your photos. So I'm going to go over to my third desktop and oops, uh, this is my photos folder. And, uh, I always tell people this before I get going that you should organize your photos on the file system. Um, if Aperture and iPhoto have taught us anything, is that you need to have your data independent of your application. So if you had everything in a big monolithic file managed by Aperture, you know, transitioning to something else was painful. Uh, so I am going to organize everything on the file system in these kind of directories. This is just a portion of it, so I wanted to get the idea across. You know, I've got a folder, a folder or a directory for, you know, each kind of genre, screenshots, I should really just say screenshots because that's what I, you know, it's every, if I take a screenshot and I want to keep it, I put it in there. Um, projects, uh, photo projects I'm working on, models, photos by year, desktop. So if like, if I make a desktop, like a wallpaper, like one of these things for somebody, I save the JPEG there. Um, by, by, um, by genre. So, you know, there's a couple there. Again, not everything. This is just like a slice of my library. Uh, photos by year is the one that probably needs the most explanation. So, um, like most photographers, I carry a camera around with me everywhere. And I take a lot of pictures. So, at the end of the day, or whatever, I come in here and I create a folder. You know, you got a year, you got a month, and I create a folder for different uh, things I have shot that aren't necessarily... They're personal things, you know, they're just kind of... I got a camera, oh, there's a neat thing, let me take a picture of it. And I try to give it a meaningful, each folder... A meaningful name for you know what it is so if I go back and look at it on the file system I know what it is the great thing about this is I can come in here and grab a file without having to resort to opening an application is right on the file system um, remember photos are files photos are data you can treat them like you were a, uh, a Microsoft Word document 
um, clients. So, you know, I come in here and I have it by different types of client portraits, um, automotive. I've been doing some automotive photography lately for different people. So I have that organized there, editorial commercial stuff. I've got a few of those. And so, you know, client name and usually what I photographed. This uh, young lady here got two graduation different sessions. So I have those in separate directories. Um, uh, the guy we're going to be working with here today is uh, Jeremy Booker, and um, so I've dumped his files in there. You can ignore the XMP because I was messing around with them earlier, but uh, the NEF files are in here, and again, you can just sort of click on those. In fact, I'm going to go ahead and get rid of those XMP. Pardon me, doing a little housekeeping. My photos, my videos aren't as polished as the other guys, so I'm going to ditch those. All right. So you know you've got your photos in here now and so you can grab them like you would anyone else you know if I'm just working with somebody once probably not gonna be shooting with them again I just stick them in one folder like that again this works for me may not work for you so please <clears throat> don't think this is the only way to do it but the takeaway from this is keep your files organized independently of your application all right we are back here in Darktable now. So I just switched over to desktops. Um, <clears throat> this is the screen that you're greeted with when you first open Darktable. Um, you know, if you just installed it, you get this, you know, empty screen. It looks kind of like Lightroom. You've got different modules. Um, we're mostly going to be dealing with this light table module up here today. Um, you've got Darkroom, which is just like the Adobe Lightroom Dark uh, develop module, you know, lets you kind of edit and then and change things about the photo. Tethering, just like it sounds, tethering, if you connect the camera to your computer, I mean, it's just, you know, there's no camera with support in use. Um, I don't have a camera connected. You can, you know, uh, have it downloaded, just like Capture One does, a similar functionality to that. I think Lightroom does capture tethering too now, or it has now for a while. Uh, map, if you have a camera with GPS, you can you know, come in here to your map view and it'll put pin, put little pins where your where your photos have been taken. I only have one camera with a GPS and I don't use it that often. Um, slideshow, I don't ever use. That's, you know, for creating slideshows if you want to bore people with your vacation photos. And print module I used to use more of in Lightroom. When I had a printer, I moved and sold my printer because I had plans on upgrading, but then, you know, other things. So I haven't bought a new printer since then. But that's where you would go to do the printing. Uh, it's something I want to get back into. So, um, yeah, anyway, watch some ads or something on this video. Help me buy a printer, guys. I don't know. Or not. I don't care. Anyway, so um, that's kind of the general layout. Uh, you've got uh, two columns, just like Lightroom, on either side. You've got a few buttons up here. This gear is your settings. Um, this shows image overlays, which I'll talk about that when we get some images imported. Um, if you can group images together, like say you shoot a burst or something, you can group a bunch of images and collapse them down. That kind of expands and stuff like that. Uh, down here in the bottom, I guess I should use the zoom feature, you've got your star ratings and your color labels, just like you would with Lightroom or any other software. And down here, um, this little, looks like a monitor, um, lets you tell it how to get the, uh, what profile you want it to use. Um, I always just leave it on the system display profile. I have the color calibrator and calibrate my screen regularly. In fact, it just ran out recently um, today or yesterday, so I need to do it again. But um, you can come down here and use this to change your profile if you're printing. If you're having output to a different printer or something, you can you can change it there. Uh, so before we actually import any images, the thing I like to do is to come in the preferences, and this is when you first install the application, fire it up. Come in here and look at this stuff. Um, you know, a lot of this stuff I leave at default, but there are a few things I change. Um, down here, it says in the GUI options. Um, so, okay, I guess I should go over this before I start talking about that. If you've got GUI options, which are options just for your interface here. Uh, core options, which are for like the underlying engine uh, of the program. Uh, session options like this is where it stores like temporary files, variables, things that it needs to operate. Shortcuts. If you want to know like a keyboard shortcut, you can come in here and um, and look at it and see, uh, you know what 
what what uh, what sh shortcut does uh, does what um, for that application or for that particular module or whatever. Um, so that's what it is. One thing I will say about this on the Mac is that um, <clears throat> Darktable uses the traditional Linux control key for um, your for your command key on a Mac. If you've been using a Mac for a while, you're used to the command key, the Apple key. Um, in Darktable, you're going to be using the control key. That's just something they haven't switched over. Again, it's free. It's made by volunteers. I'm sorry. Uh, anyway, uh, presets preferences. This is kind of like what Lightroom does. I don't do this too much because I'm not a preset kind of a guy. Some people are, but you can uh, develop certain looks for a photo and store them and. Um, Store them, and so when you import a bunch of photos, you can apply that look, or you export them, you can apply that look, or whatever. <clears throat> whatever. I tend not to do that. Some people do. I, I'll probably go over that in the darkroom module a little bit um, in the next video, but uh, um, but yeah, I, I just don't use presets that much. But let's go back to the GUI options and, and change a few things here. Uh, the first thing I usually change is on the Mac is this where it says send files to trash before to trash when erasing images. I didn't check that. I have yet to have that work on OS X. And I don't know why it doesn't work, but uh, it, it just doesn't. So I, I, and that way too, I don't have to remember to go and empty the trash. So, oh, hyper. So I uncheck that. And I scroll down here and uh, all the rest of that I leave default. Uh, number of folder levels, uh, folder levels are showing list one. Uh, okay, recursive directory traversal when importing film rolls. I check that sometimes. Like if I have my camera, I'm I'm especially bad about this with my Fuji. <clears throat> I'll leave it in JPEG plus RAW, and then I'll have like JPEGs and RAWs, and I'll put those in different directories, and um, that way it picks up both of them. Um, so that's how I organize that, uh, and also you know to go with that setting I you know I let it import the JPEGs um, next thing is you want to set up your metadata so this is where you set up your initial sort of uh, fields and tags uh, and so when it imports an image when Darktable imports an image it'll apply this data to that image and store it with the XMP file so this is just some default settings uh, for your creator you can put in your name publisher you can put in whatever whatever else here, um, at rights to be applied. You can put like, you know, copyright or uh, all rights reserved. I do creative commons uh, by NCSA 4.0, I think is the latest one. Um, I use creative commons licensing. So put whatever you want there, it's your pictures. All rights reserved, copyright, you know, by order of the king, I don't know, but anyway. Um, uh, tags, comma separate list of tags to be applied when importing. This is a default set of tags that will be applied to every image you ever import. So for my default tags, I usually put my name and my website. If you don't have a website, put a Flickr account or, um, or a, uh, uh, Instagram account or something, I guess. But, um, I do this for the purpose of when I upload to Flickr or, or 500 pixels or Facebook or whatever, these tags follow that image. So, you know, if someone's looking for my photos or, you know, you know, when I import them, I also apply more tags. Um, my website stays with it. It's just kind of a little bit of ninja marketing, um, identification, um, eh, whatever. Uh, you can do it or you don't. Uh, the other thing I change is initial importing rating. I change that to zero. Um, oh, one other thing here. You probably notice this popping up in the bottom. These, these, uh, these, uh, oh, we don't need that. These, uh, go away, uh, uh, key strokes popping up in the bottom. They are, uh, I hate dashboard. <laughs> anyway, uh, popping up at the bottom. I have a program running called Keycaster that's going to show you all the key strokes I type that way. Um, if you're wondering what command keys I hit or something, it'll pop up there and, and you'll be good to go. Um, the rest of this, I pretty much leave default. Uh, you know, all these are all these options. I don't really have any problems with. Um, uh, so we'll move on to the core options here. 
Um, and this stuff here has to do with like memory and processor threads. A lot of this is automatically detected based on your system. Uh, this is an older Mac Pro with like an older graphics card, and so it doesn't uh, support OpenCL. Or it does, but it's an old slow card, so Dark Table makes the uh, makes the decision not to enable it. It detects that I have eight cores and gives me eight threads. The only thing I really change in here by default is auto apply camera base curve presets right here. This this guy here. Um, there's this module called base curve in the dark room. And by default, it applies to like a neutral flat curve um, or like a manufacturer default um, based on like Nikon or Fuji or Canon. Um, but there are base curves for particular camera models. Uh, what this does is it'll apply those base curves to the raw file. You know, it detects the, the camera model from the raw file. So you get something that looks closer to what you saw on the back of the camera. It just gives you a nice starting point. So those are really the only thing I changed. We'll close that, and again, that was right here in this gear menu. All right, um, good. Everybody good with that? I'm assuming so because I'm not hearing any response back, but I can't because you're watching this probably years after I've recorded it. Um, <clears throat> I don't take myself very seriously. So now we're ready to load this puppy with some images. So to do that, we go up here into the import, and up here in import, you drop that down. And we want to import a folder, so you click on folder, and that pops up this window here. Um, looks like a file browser. It looks a little different from what you're used to on OS X, but that's okay. Don't panic. You'll do fine. The first thing you'll notice is that there's no like hard drives over here because this isn't a Mac native application. It doesn't know where Mac mounts the drive. So in order to do to find like if you're like me and you keep your files on an external um, drive, you actually have to go into your root and then into your volumes, and then your drive, and then that, and uh, uh, photos, and um, just drill down to where you had it. And this should look familiar from earlier. So we're going to go into clients, portraits, and we're looking at Mr. Booker. He was kind enough to let us use, his, use him for an example. And down here, where it says import options, if you click this triangle, you get this expanded image menu here. Uh, I let it import JPEG files because again, sometimes I do shoot in JPEG. <gasps> bum, bum, bum. I, whatever. Um, hard drives aren't free, people. JPEGs are smaller. Um, import directories recursively. And I check this box that says apply metadata on import and I add a few tags. Um, so if you um, you know, I don't know what your tagging philosophy is. I do probably no more than 10 tags. So I usually put their name, if it's a client or something or a person, uh, where the photo was taken, Boone, North Carolina, App State, and what the portrait is. It's a portrait or a headshot or something like that. Again, I don't go crazy. That gives me enough data that I can use these tags later to find the photos. Um, again, if you upload them to a web service, they follow it. It helps categorize them and whatever else. Um, so, you know, stick to whatever tagging philosophy you like. Uh, I like this way. It's simple. I don't spend all day doing it. And um, now you're ready to import. And it's going to take a minute. And we're going to wind up at these uh, photos here. Uh, my, those do look kind of dark. Did that not... Uh... Yeah, no, I did. Okay. Maybe it's just my screen here, but uh, it's going to bring those in. And we're going to have uh, have our photos here. And let me just click on this here. Zoom in while it's thinking. Those do look dark. Oh, okay. Now maybe they're, maybe it's just maybe it's just my screen and I'm uh wait, wait, wait. Oh, that's what I did. Sorry, guys. I was down here showing that I accidentally clicked on that. There we go. System display profile. I thought those looked a little dark. So, pro tip: if you might, you may have fat fingered your profile down here if your photos look off. There we go. Okay, now those look normal. <laughs> Sorry, a little bug in the program, uh, or in my program, not in the program's program. So now that we've got a bunch of files here. Uh, we can kind of expand some of these boxes out. By default, they're all collapsed. Uh, I don't really use styles that much. Metadata editor, tagging, 
geotagging. I don't have a GPS camera in here, so we'll type that in the export when I expand. And I'll do collect images and the image information tab. Um, and that's really all I'll bring out. Um, collect images is kind of useful. Uh, it allows you to drill down and select images. So right now we have film roll. It defaults to the film roll view, which I'm not really that big of a fan of. I prefer the folder view. And um, it's not real clear right now because we're just working with one folder of images, but if you have multiple fold folders, it'll give you the whole directory structure. So if you have subdirectories and all this other stuff, um, it makes it a little bit more Lightroom-esque um, and mirrors whatever you have on your, 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 your hard drive. Um, but the really neat thing is you can drill down. So if you click on this guy here and uh, click narrow this search down, you get another box. And you can um, filter by any number of things, you know, right, lens, focal length. Let's look at lens here, and let's say we just want to see the one shot with the uh, Nikon 105. Boom. That just gives us that. Um, we can clear this rule, narrow down the search. We can um, <clears throat> look at date, tag, camera. So, I mean, they all have the same tag. That's kind of silly. Uh, I've only shot this one camera with a D800. Uh, you know, again, we can go back to uh, even focal length, a 50 and a 105. So we just want the one shot with the 50. And that just gives you your camera, your, your, your particular photos shot with your 50. So it's pretty handy. Uh, you can filter by color label. So, again, you've got these color labels down here. If you take a look down here in your bottom, bottom, uh, uh, part of your light table module here, you can go and apply like a red label and a yellow label and a green label. You can also use keys to do this. Uh, it's the F, F function keys. Oh, for P, or P. Anyway, uh, I'm going to cut that off. And you can come through there and just uh, sort of uh, set this color label. I'm not a big user of color labels. I use the star system a little bit more. Um, but <clears throat> that just gives you another thing to organize your photos with. Uh, um, again, um, you know, that's up to personal taste. Uh, so we got our images imported. There are 44 images in our current collection. And what I like to do when I get going is to go through and kind of call them. So, uh, oh, yeah, this is where I was going to show you what this star up here does. You see this shows image overlays. If you click it, you get your little uh, icons here for your stars and your uh, rejection X. So like this is just a tree I was getting set up. I'm going to hit the rejection X on that right away because I know I'm not going to want to keep that photo. And that's later very handy for, you know, throwing these photos out. So, you know, again, we can go through and, and do that on various photos. We'll do that in a minute here. But... Uh, I like leaving the overlay on because it gives me a quick and dirty, <clears throat> quick and dirty kind of look at it, and mostly dirty. But uh, anyway, <clears throat> look at the photos. So uh, and and what 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 have applied to them? That's that man. It is what it is. Again, personal taste, what you can do. So um, and and uh, the star system. In case you're not familiar with it, you can do. Uh, you can use the keyboard. You can click on the number of stars you want. Um, zero clears it, um, two, three, I'm pretty binary, so I pretty much just use like zero and five stars. <laughs> uh, five stars are the images I deliver to the client, zero stars are the ones that aren't bad enough to be thrown away, but aren't good enough to really use, I kind of leave them around. If it's a terrible photo, like, uh, like this here, he wasn't really ready, I was just kind of getting the light ready, you know, I, I, I set that to rejection, I don't like what he's doing with his hands there, I don't like that pose. I'll go through and reject all of those. When you do go through and after you get done rejecting it, oh, by the way, you have a slider down here so you can adjust the number of thumbnails in this view. The bigger the number, the more thumbnails it shows. So like this is like eight across. I usually keep it on like two or three, um, three across. I don't have, I have a 1080p screen so I don't have a lot of real estate. But um, <clears throat> anyway, this is, uh, so this is, once you get these rejected, you can just go up here and to view where it says view up here at the top of the screen and view by rejected only and then you'll just have the photos that you tossed out on their head 
Uh, you can also say all except rejected. So, you know, if you want to keep them around, but just not look at them, you can view all but rejected. I encourage, you know, I throw away my photos. I don't want to keep, yeah, digital's cheap, but hard drives ain't free. Uh, <laughs> there is backup services. So, you know, I throw away, especially now with like a D800 and a huge sensor and whatever the five, uh, the, the Canon 5D type R, WRX, whatever it's called. It has the huge sensor on it, you know, two terabyte hard drives can go pretty fast, so can fill pretty fast. So I, I, you know, I throw away. Take your own personal stance on that. Um, I also, if I'm shooting with a single camera, like in this, I will uh, just sort by file name because um, the camera has its own naming scheme and it'll kind of go in chronological order. I'm shooting with multiple cameras. I'll sort by time because, you know, I try to keep the camera clocks in sync. You know, I check them every couple months. Um, so that way I get a chronological listing, and then, you know, this is your ascending and descending order over here. So we'll just change that back to file name here, and we'll be ready to go. So let's get rolling here. So we have um, we have about 44 photos here. <clears throat> let's go through and knock out the ones we don't want to keep. So I'm going to go through here, crank this down to two photos, and I'm just going to scroll through and kind of click on Look, I don't like that one. I don't like that one because of his fist. Those are okay. He's kind of squinting in that one. That one's a winner. Uh, we'll keep these. We'll keep that one. Um, we'll keep those for now. I don't like that. Um, I cut off his finger there. So I just kind of come through and make a quick pass, literally. Um, don't like that with the Jeep in the background there. Uh, I don't like that one. Caught him mid blink. Same with that one. The rest of them look okay. And again, just make a quick, quick, quick and dirty pass just to look at them to make sure. Now we'll change that to just looking at rejected only. So we've got 14 rejected. What I would do at this point. <clears throat> And just make one more pass, kind of take a quick gander and make sure you're not unintentionally throwing away something you want to keep. I verified those are all ones I want to delete. And now I hit Control A. Uh, not Command A, Control A. Remember that, guys and gals. Um, to select all those photos. And I come over here and to select images and I click the delete button. And it asks me, do you really want to delete these 14 selected images from the disk? Yes, I really want to. So. After you do this, they're gone. They aren't going to the trash, they're gone. So be sure, uh, again, double check them before you click the yes button. I'm sure, I've got backups, I'm good. Um, bam, and they're gone. After you do that, you'll be back to a dark screen or a blank screen to get the non-rejected photos back. Just either go back to all or what have you. And uh, all your photos are back. We're down to 30, which is a more manageable number. Again, you know, deleting things is free. Um, recovering them isn't though, so like I said, be sure of that. So now we can go through and kind of pick out the ones that we really think are the winners. Now, I'm a very binary person, so if it's something I want to visit for editing, I give it a five star rating. That could change later. You know, I could set it to zero stars. So like that one I want to visit for editing, that one, and that one possibly, that one. Um, that one I want to visit for editing. Maybe that one, maybe that one, whew, the light was kind of bright in that one. You about got a suntan off of that uh, flash there in that image, <laughs> one of these images. That one I want to visit for editing. Ooh, how did I miss that one? That one's a reject. Um, let's see. That one I want to visit for editing. Um, and that one I want to visit for editing. Is there any more? Yeah, that one I want to definitely want to hit for editing. Perhaps, uh, so like this one I've cut off the tip of his finger. I'll take that one. Um, so there we go. And we'll go back and review our rejected. That one I missed. Delete it. Yes, all right. We'll go back. And now we'll look at our five stars. So now we've got about a dozen photos that we want to edit. And... Um, I want to do that in the next video, obviously. It's going to be on the darkroom module. But now we've gone through, we've imported our photos, we've tagged our photos, we've <clears throat> gotten rid of our bad photos, and we have selected our ones that we're going to edit. 
um, all in under, you know, what time did I start? What, this is like 15 minutes maybe. We've done that. So this is pretty good software for doing that. Some people use Photo Mechanic. I just do it all in here. Um, Photo Mechanic or uh, there's another free one I forget. But um, I just do it in here. And it's quick and easy. And it uh, doesn't take a lot of time. And again, you know, this, these ratings can change. I can go into the develop module and see maybe one isn't sharp or, or there's something, you know, like, Maybe there is something in the image that I can't see on this view, but is evident in this view that I'm like, oh, well, that's a bad image and I can get rid of it. Um, but uh, so these ratings could change. This is just preliminary. But when I'm done, the images with five stars will be the ones that I export and deliver to the client. So that's how I use the star rating system. Um, if you have questions, feel free to answer, ask them in the comments. I'll try to answer them. Uh, if you like the video, give me a thumbs up and great. Uh, you can subscribe for more. Uh, if you don't like the video, give me a thumbs down, but let me know why. Just don't give me a thumbs down and run. Um, <laughs> you can, uh, um, you know, you know, feedback is helpful and feedback like you suck and I'm, you know, or, you know, I'm sure your mom smells or something. I, that's not very helpful. Actually helpful feedback would be helpful. Um, but in the next video, we're going to hit on this dark room module up here. Dun, 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 the dark side and start looking at that and actually editing and and you know clearing up things getting rid of um you know adjusting our white balance getting contrast and all those things the way we want them for delivery and then the last video i'll go over actually exporting them for delivery using the uh um back in the light table module here you know what some of these settings do and everything again Thanks for watching. This has been Using Darktable in OS 10. My name is Leander. You can find me here on YouTube, uh, sometimes on Twitter and other places, not very often, and Instagram. I'll leave links into I'll leave links in the description to uh, Riley and Robert's channel. Uh, they have some good information there too. And uh, I will see you next time.